you get to Stanford, you were my freshman. What was mm. your first impression of me? And I'll give you mine of you. First off, you're the Haley Jones. So okay, I was no. very into Haley. No. Haley. I was intimidated when I first walked in the Lord. locker. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, this girl's amazing. Like she's insane. And you're just like, I think you're just so well-spoken and you always know the right thing to say. And it was just so easy to like, you know, look up to you for anything. And I was, you know, I was just, I still talk about you to this day. I'm like, Kaylee's like Whew. literally the most amazing person I've ever played with. We got waterworks over here. Oh, stop, <laughs> stop. You're going to I was like, like, no, but seriously, I'm like, she's an amazing person. She's an amazing leader. Like, she's just 10 out of 10. So, yeah. You, like, are one of the most hyped up teammates I've ever played with, which I love. Like, after every bucket, you're like, yeah, let's go. You're doing the whole thing. Welcome back to Sometimes I Hoop. A new college basketball season is off to a hot start. And we're back talking to some of the top players in the game about their careers and what this season may hold. Today, we've got a walking bucket on the pod. Quick humble brag, number one recruit in the class of 2022, McDonald's All-American, double-double machine at UCLA, leading the country in field goal percentage at 74%. None other than my dear friend and former teammate, Miss Lauren Betts. Aww. Thanks for hopping on the pod. Thanks for having me, hey. So a little bit on your non-conference schedule. You guys had a tough schedule. It was not it was not a cakewalk. So no. what was kind of that big test that you guys have had that you feel has prepared you for the rest of the Pac-12 season? Well, first off, we started with Princeton. First off, yeah, Princeton is good. Princeton, Princeton is so underrated. They're so they're good. good. They're yeah. so talented. All their guards are so skilled. And like their posts are pretty much like they can play from anywhere. So it's, mm -hmm. it was very mm -hmm. difficult to guard them. But that was a really tough like first game to begin with. And then we had UConn, which obviously yeah. like everyone knows they're UConn. So that was just really tough. Mm -hmm. And they had like all their fans, like the entire gym was just all UConn fans. And then we had like a little UCLA <laughs> section. Of like three or four pairs. little blue and gold. <laughs> it was so sad. It was so sad. I'm so glad we won, but I was like, oh my gosh, like this is embarrassing. Like, wow. Oh my God. Like there's no one here. But yeah, so that was like, that was a really big game for us. Ohio State was tough. Um, yeah. Because obviously like it was pretty much sold out. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't, we didn't play our best that game. So we really had to step it up in the third, fourth quarter and get our acts together and thank God we won. But yeah, like mm -hmm. I think we had a really good non-conference schedule. And I think that's ultimately like prepared us for what's coming up next. Cause obviously, you know, like going to Pac-12, every single game is just so tough. Like yeah. there's not an easy game whatsoever. So yeah, I'm really happy with our non-conference schedule. And I think that we'll do really well because of it. So. Yeah. So I know USC was a big game for you guys that you probably had circled on the calendar for a minute. What's kind of that next big game that we're pushing towards? Is it a February 4th? Is it is it something else on your mind? Uh, I mean, obviously that game is going to be like a really, you know, that's going to be an intense game. But other than that one, other than yeah. that game, I would say that week playing Colorado, Utah, that's going to be mm -hmm. a pretty tough matchup. Listen, first off, we have the elevation. Like, I'm not going to be able to breathe. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. my chest is going to be burning up. Like, you already know. Like, it's tough playing mm -hmm. over there. But, I mean, those are two, like, really good teams. I mean, you know, Sherrod just went off for, what, like, 34 against yeah. Utah? Like, yeah. she's tough. And then you got Peely on Utah. Like, it's going to be two back-to-back, -to -back, yeah. like, very tough games. So, I think that whole, you know, week will be really difficult. But I'm excited. So, that's what we prepare yeah. for. Yeah. Our Pac-12, this is the last year at the Pac, which is yeah, crazy to think it's about. It's crazy. An opinion that I have is as every Pac-12 team disperse, disperses into all their different conferences, I feel like the Pac-12 is so strong. The top teams in the Pac are going to go be the top teams at these other conferences. So like 1,000%. Oh, yeah, like you and USC in the Big Ten, done. And then Colorado and Utah in the Big 12, Stanford and the ACC, like they're just going to be taking over these top spots. And then these yeah. other teams aren't going to know what to do because for one – they don't even watch the Pac-12 network because it's regional. Mm -hmm. So like, they're not going to know what to expect, just Listen, like what happens in the tournament every year. First off, the Pac-12 is so underrated. Everyone knows that the Pac-12 is the best. Everybody mm -hmm. knows. I mean, it, the mm -hmm. real ones know, you know, what the best <laughs> conference is. But yes. I just don't think that these people are ready. I mean, like I 100% agree. I think that, you know, all the conferences that we 
join, we're just going to take over, like, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. I mean, I'm I, excited. I it's, you know, it's going to be interesting, but, like, you know, especially with all the travel and the school, mm -hmm. I don't know how that's going to work. That's a whole nother situation. That's for but another time. I know that's for another time. I'm not going to worry about that right now, but I'm mm -hmm. really excited. I think that it'll be really interesting just to, like, get a different taste of, like, what that conference is like. I feel like the Pac-12, like, the type of basketball we play is just so different from everybody else's. Like, I'm really mm -hmm. interested to see. Like, we got a little taste of the Ohio State, but, like, yeah, it'll be it'll be really fun. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, and I think just on the Pac-12 disbanding, do you feel like, you know, this conference play, this conference tournament at the end of the season means that much more that it's going to be the last Pac-12 title oh, for, for sure. forever? For yeah. sure. It's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. Like we've been mm -hmm. talking about that. It's like, you know, it's obviously it's like the Pac-12 tournament. Everybody wants to win, but it's the last one. Like mm -hmm. it will go down in all of Pac-12 history. Listen, like we have to win. <laughs> yeah. We have to win. So it means a lot. It means a lot. But yeah, that's a topic that we've been talking about a lot on our team. Yeah. It's really crazy to think about just it went Pac-12 to Pac-10, mm -hmm. Pac-12, and now it's going to be mm -hmm. literally gone, which is why. I know. The teams that you've played, <laughs> the film that you've watched, <laughs> is there a specific player that you feel like is very underrated? Like they don't get the hype that they deserve. Somebody that really impressed you. Peely just start because she had that big South Carolina game, which she should have been getting that. Like I say, we already know, knew. We already knew how good Peely <laughs> was, but it's like the world just like finally figured it out. But everyone in the Pac-12 mm -hmm. knows how good Peely is, and she's an amazing person, like off the court as well. Yes. So I'm just she's really so happy nice. to see. I know she's so sweet. So I'm like really <laughs> happy that she's getting the recognition she deserves. Because I'm like, yep. like where has it been? Like everyone knew she could have gone off for thirty. Like mm -hmm. a, you know, like every single. That's just the player she is. She's just so yeah. amazing. So big fan, big fan of Peely. She's great. Shout, shout out Peely. We're fans. <laughs> Big fan. We've already seen a lot of upsets happen this year. LSU mm -hmm. losing their first game this season. The yeah. list just really goes on with unranked team beating top teams, just different sleeper teams coming around. Do you feel like there may be some top teams that are going to struggle in their conferences? Because we kind of see it every year where teams drop some games, this and that. So do you feel like there's going to be some top teams that end up struggling? Haley, this is so controversial. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, Lauren. We're, we we got to talk about it. I, here, I can start. I can start. Okay, you start. You and this start. is this is like no shade. This is just okay. That okay. It happened. It happened to us last year. Like yeah, you go into some games and you're not completely prepared because you're like, oh, it's going to be true. a walk in the park. Oh, we beat them last time. I think. Last year when we went to Utah, we didn't approach it the same way we did the first time. So oh we got well, us. yeah. I mean, like, that was also because Washington. we had gone in with like. <laughs> yeah, but Washington, like Washington was got yeah, us. Washington. That was crazy. Was I forgot about no that. No excuse. We I lost. forgot that we lost to them. <laughs> yes, so, they got us. So, so I feel like we every did. every year, no matter how good the team is, there's gonna be some struggles in the season, and it's all about yeah. how you bounce back. So, like the ACC, you think about the top dogs there, right? Mm. But then you know you think about some of the teams that may not always get the recognition. A team like Florida State, they could come mm. up and surprise somebody like a Virginia Tech, yeah. like Notre Dame, True. the SEC, like Ole Miss. They got us. They could get somebody. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> like you never know. I Dang. think there's always. <laughs> I think like there's yeah. always those teams. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, just said a soft spot. That was yeah. That was really bad. <laughs> Bringing up trauma. Like trauma. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm trying to think of like what other teams in different conferences that could step up. I mean, Florida State, we could talk yeah. about them. I mean, they're tough. Miss Latson. Listen, Miss Latson. She's been on she's been on here before, right? She's she's no, in but oh, she hasn't. Oh, we need we yeah, we need together. to get her. We need to get her. She is insane. <laughs> she Ms. is Latson, if you're listening. If you're listening, please come on this show. She is insane. <laughs> she's so good. Like she just finishes like in the mo like no no shade, but she finishes in some awkward positions. I'm like, there's no way that this is going in. And she yeah. I'm not gonna lie, she got one on me. She hit me in the she hit me in the chin and I'm like my, I got oh, okay. a fat lip after the game. She had, I had a fat lip after the game because I was like, dang, like I didn't like, oh go my in. God. like she is tough. She's really yeah. good. And she can finish over everybody. Like she's not mm -hmm. scared. She's like the most fearless guard I, I've ever played against. Like I'll be standing there and I'm just like, there's no way she's gonna go up. She goes up mm -hmm. and I'm mm -hmm. standing there six, seven, like she does not care. I'm like, okay, sis, <laughs> <laughs> pop off. Pop off. So yes, Get Florida it, State. 
Florida State, I think they're going to surprise some people. They're good. Yeah. They're very I good. I think so, too. I think so, too. And then we talked a little bit about Peely, gave her mm. her flowers and a little bit about mm-hmm. Sherrod. But just kind of diving more into that, I feel like not a lot of people recognize how talented some of the teams are in the Pac-12, specifically mm. some of the top players. Yeah. So I want you to give me a quick breakdown of how good some of these players are. And you don't have to do everybody. I'll give you, I'll give you the top, some of the some okay. names here. Mm. So, Miss Quay Miller, a bucket. Oh, yeah. Tell me about tell me about Quay. First off, shooter, shooter. <laughs> you don't expect it, and then boom, t- she just got, she just like every time. I'm just like yeah. you know, and people won't guard her from the three sometimes, and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, same I'm watching as, the game. Like, same as same you- as Frida, same as Frida. <sighs> They'll leave her and Frida open. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what are yes, you doing? yes. I'm like. So, yeah, I think they're just like, I think they're just like unexpected shooters. Like they're just unbelievably yeah. talented and they spread out the floor so well. Like, mm-hmm. and it, it's just very hard to guard because Qua- like she can play from wherever on the floor. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. She'll post you up. She's strong. She's very strong, strong. Uh, <laughs> but she can shoot too. So it's just like, dang, like yes. what are you supposed to do? So yeah, great player. Great player. Okay. Shout out Quay. Our next person yeah. is a little bit more... A little bit more about Peely. I think one thing that makes her so special is she's not the biggest, right? No. But somehow, similar to to Miss Ladson, she mm-hmm. knows how to finish around like the mm-hmm. tallest players. Whether it's, it's like she, it's like she practices. She, she. Yeah. I swear to God, she must just work like that's all she does in her workouts. I swear. Yes. I'm like, how? Do you, well, her footwork is just like. Chef's kiss. Impeccable. Like I mm-hmm. yes, I'll like I was watching, I was there for the beginning of the South Carolina game and I'm watching mm-hmm. some of like the I'm like just and I'm just looking at her feet. I'm like, how does she manage to like just move around like yes. everybody? And she gets them like so deep underneath. I swear mm-hmm. she just like shoves them and there's nothing you can do. Like once she's once no. she's got you like in the war zone, like there's nothing you can do. There's nothing yeah. you can do. Like she's she's scoring on you. So like yeah, she's tough and she's strong and she can yeah. shoot people, you know, again, one of those like little sharp shooters that you don't even think about. She'll get it at the top of the key and it's over. Like she's making yeah. it. So it's just, yeah, she's, What's she can play about her is also. like, she's already down there. And then all of a sudden, okay, now mm-hmm. she's going to bring up the floor and get an all ball screen. And it's like, yes. Whoa. You never so know what she's ha- going to do. Yeah. Really it's don't. very hard to guard. And then last player we'll talk about is Jalen Sherrod. Like, Mm. I feel like she's really come into her own these last few seasons, mm-hmm. which is so impressive to watch because obviously we know her speed and she can get to the rim. Yeah. But I think yeah. her adding that like mid range game and extending it out to yes. three, you can't go under anymore. No, That's what it used can't. to be. Oh, go no. under and then get to her right hand. Now she's like, okay, nope. boom, I don't need the right, left. Nope. Oh, behind the screen, pull up. There's so many different ways she can beat you now. I'm just so happy I'm not a guard. Listen, I. <laughs> If I had to pick that girl up full court, oh my gosh, yeah. it'd be oh over. Like I couldn't do it. She's just like yeah. the fastest person I've ever seen ever mm-hmm. on the court. So props to her, but she's killing it. Like super happy for her. She had a great game against Utah. But yeah, like yeah. you said, like she can shoot really well now. So it's like, I mean, she's been able to shoot, but like she's just so efficient now. It's like you have to, you know, play over the top. And she's just, yeah, she's great. Super happy for her. Yeah, super fun scout to to deal mm-hmm. with all three of them. Oh, ex- um, yeah, super fun. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it back to your roots a little bit. So mm. you were born in Spain, where your dad was playing yeah. professionally. Shout out mm-hmm. to my guy, love him. <laughs> love you, you, Andy. Re- <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember going to any of your dad's games when you were younger? Yes. Because the overseas atmosphere is different from here. So what it was is. that like? Yeah. I mean, it was definitely different. I think like European fans are so like the game in Europe is so much different than here. Like the fans are crazier. Mm-hmm. Like I remember there's one game that like went viral on YouTube of my dad, like during the jump ball, he got it and all the fans throw like confetti on the court. And I guess it's like a thing in Europe. Like you throw confetti on the court, like, but like imagine oh. having to clean all of that up. Like they don't start the game <laughs> for like half an hour later because they yeah. do it so much. Like the entire court was like covered, but it's just like, it's crazy. Like it's a whole different environment. It's way more fun in my opinion, going to those type of games just because of like, you know, the fans and everything. But yeah, yeah, great memories, obviously like 
you know, I looked up to my dad growing up. He's an amazing basketball player and he's taught me like pretty much everything I know about being a post. So yeah, it was just really fun and get great memories. Yeah, it is crazy playing over there. They allow like the noisemakers and everything. You could be mm -hmm. doing blow horns in the middle of the game. It's exactly it's really it's really crazy. It's really intense. It's a lot. It There's is. a lot going on. It is. Yeah. But so you moved to Colorado in the third grade. Did your dad no. put the ball in your hands or how did how did your relationship with basketball start? So I didn't want to become a basketball player at the very mm -hmm. beginning. I was like, let me just like, you know, separate myself from my dad for like a hot minute. And so I started playing soccer and I was terrible. I was first off, I was, I was a little too tall to, be, <laughs> to play, to play I soccer. I was like, this is not my thing. Yeah. I was say, like Betty, my, Betty, I don't think that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> no. And my family like still makes fun of me for it. Cause they're like, you know, like you only had one move, like you were awful. Like they keep it. <laughs> <laughs> they still make fun of me to this oh, day. God. And so then I went to like competitive swimming and I was just actually really good at it. Like I really mm -hmm. loved it. And then at some point I was like, I need to choose like what I'm going to do because you can't do competitive swimming and competitive basketball. Like it's just way yeah. too hectic. And I was like, it's time consuming. Like I can't do it. So yeah, then like I just wanted to start playing basketball and I was awful, but it became one day where I was just like, okay, like I actually want to be like decent. Like I don't like being bad. This isn't fun anymore. <laughs> like, like, you it know, it's, it's, fun. Yeah. it's fun up to a point, up to a point. You're like, yes. okay, I'm like done getting scored on every time. Like I'm yes. exhausted. Understood. <laughs> so like, Understood. you know, I just started like working out with my dad and then I just like came to love it. And I made all my friends through basketball. Like all my closest yeah. friends to this day are through basketball. So I think for me, it was just about like building relationships. And I think that's how I came to love basketball. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at some point you don't want to be bad anymore. Like, no, you don't want to get it's scored. really, it's like, not, it's not fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If I'm going to do it, like I may as well do it. So exactly. I mean, that exactly. Makes do sense. it well. That makes yeah. sense. <laughs> so growing up, we weren't the best, but then we got to be the best clearly. So, late bloomers. <laughs> so who did you, who did you watch growing up that you wanted to mold your game after or kind of gain inspiration from? Honestly, I didn't watch like college basketball until like mm -hmm. the longest time, but I really liked Asia growing up, like watching her at South yeah. Carolina, loved watching her. I was like, great post. Brandon Stewart, obviously great post. Um, yeah, I don't know. And I also like loved watching Aaliyah growing up in high mm -hmm. school. Like I remember yeah. my first time playing three on three for USA. My first ever three on three game was against Haley Van Lith, Paige, Aaliyah and Samantha. Uh, oh, that now. was quite a team. I remember. Oh my gosh. And so I went against Aaliyah and I was like, who is this girl? Like I had no, I had no idea who she was at first. I was like, who is this girl? I'm coming into it like super confident. I was like, yeah, like I got it. Like I'll be fine. Aaliyah mm -hmm. bodied me like first play of the game. I was like, absolutely not. So yeah. And then ever like, since I just like watched all of her clips on YouTube, I was like, okay, where is she going to college? Like, that's so cool. But like, I'm a big Aaliyah Boston fan, like huge. Oh girl, so, me too. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, she's like, I think just one of the most amazing posts I've ever seen in women's basketball mm -hmm. and she's yeah, huge inspo. So love her game. Yeah. Yeah. No, she's amazing. And I feel like it's so cool for me because I feel like I've watched your growth because mm. we played each other in high school. If you remember <laughs> yeah, at the tournament of champions, <laughs> Do you want to tell? Senior, do you want to tell? Do you want to tell them where you where you were before the game even started? In the bathroom. Dying? You were in the ER. You came. Yeah, yes, you came from the, the ER. emergency room. <laughs> in the ER. I remember oh. I got food poisoning, and so yeah. I was playing Lauren. And um, every what well, basically every time out or every few every few minutes, I would tell about the game. <laughs> go sit with the garbage bag on the end of the bench and then go back in there and try to shoot it against this six, seven girl. And I remember being like, and Kate, Kate Pay was at the game. Yeah. And I remember going up to her after the game being like, so we getting her or like, you know, are you recruiting her too? Cause that's a tall woman. Like, I don't know how you want me to deal with this, but oh I just gosh. know you were so good in high school, but I feel like the way that you uh, progressed you. from your freshman year to your senior year was insane, Lauren. The growth Thank was you. wild. Oh my gosh. But so what was your high school experience like kind of going from, you know, being molded by your dad and not wanting to mm -hmm. play and then you end up being mm -hmm. the number one recruit and then you go through yeah. COVID. It's a lot going on. So what, yeah. what was your high school like? I mean, it really just progressed in like a crazy way. Like first, I think 
like when I first realized that I had like kind of made it was like making USA for the first time, U16s. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh my gosh. And then we found out in Chile that I was ranked first. And so we're all at dinner and like, we're like, oh, like we get a notification and like, we're all talking and they're all mumbling. And I'm like, what happened? What happened? They're like, oh, like they put the rankings out. I'm like, oh, that's cool. They're like, you're ranked first. It's like, what? like me. I bet that kind of, must have been kind of awkward. You're like, I was like this cool, is above all y'all. I know, I was like, <laughs> ah, no, no. <laughs> At first, I like didn't know what to say. But I texted my parents yeah. after and I was like, I think I'm like ranked first. Like, I don't know what that means, but I guess like I'm first. Oh. So I was like, that's kind of cool. But yeah. yeah. And then like after that, I think it just, I think I slowly just got better and better. And yeah, I don't know. I think it was just like lots of hours, obviously. Like it wasn't easy, but it just came over time. And I think I, my confidence is like the biggest thing. Like I wasn't really confident yeah. when I first started playing basketball. And I think like as all these things started, you know, coming I just got a lot more confident and just ultimately like showed in my game like I think the better I've gotten the more confident I've been in myself so I think that's been my biggest thing throughout high school so originally out of high school you ended up choosing Stanford so what Mm -hmm. led to that decision it was my dream school Like growing Mm -hmm. up, like I always wanted to go to Stanford. I had like a giant wall at my dad's house of like all the letters that they had ever sent me, like every single one, like all of, you know, Tara's letters that she ever sent me, like all my happy birthdays. I had them all Mm -hmm. pinned up on a wall. So like they were my favorite school. It was in California. I was like, there's nothing better than that. And like, obviously academics, I was like, who wouldn't want to go to Stanford? Like it was the best. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, and obviously like, you know, you were there. I had like all my Colorado girls, Fran was there. Mm -hmm. Jane was there at the Mm -hmm. time. Like it was great. Ash, it was, it was, I just knew what I was getting into. Yeah. Yeah. So I was very, I was very excited. Yeah. Now you get to share your favorite story about us playing together and then I'll share mine. Or do you want me to go first? Do you want to go first? (laughs) I have like, well, this is just because I saw this on your uh, TikTok the other day, but wait, is it the Arizona Wait, fall? Yeah. Or what do you think? <laughs> that or that like, I'm trying to think, but like anytime you've fallen in practice or like, <laughs> Please. anytime, anytime you've like fallen and you ate, you know, like in yeah. practice, I was like, oh my gosh, like she's so clumsy, but like in the funniest possible <laughs> way, like it's like. I was like, she's just like one of the greatest basketball players of all time, but she can't stay on her feet. She just falls over like, Please, like no other. Warm-ups falling down. Yes. But in like the uh. Arizona game when, you know, we were like, I remember I played a lot that game and I was like yeah. so hyped and you fell on, you, you know, you fell on the ground again. And I was like, oh gosh, Haley. And we, we, we rewatched it and you texted me a <laughs> screenshot of your face. <laughs> <laughs> your, so eyes, your eyes are popping they out like of your rolled head. back into my head it was horrible i was like why does she look like that it was so yeah. funny but i like i oh my gosh when that showed up on my for you page when you posted it it just gave me such funny memories i was like <laughs> oh my gosh i remember that it's so funny <laughs> that one was good that's a top one i think for me i really think about just I guess this isn't us playing together, but in the locker room, whenever I would play music and I would get you hyped up to start dancing or, or I would play, what song? It was, it's me and you. And we would rap Flo Millie, be Flo Mix. Oh That's my, my favorite memories I because love that song. anytime, anytime we were on Ox at a party, we need to get a jump in. I'm like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> and then me and you duo, <laughs> we just start rapping yes. the song. I think that's, oh my that's a classic. It is a classic. Oh my gosh. Yes. I love that. So we leave Stanford. You enter the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. What led to that decision to, we don't have to get too into things, but kind of what, Mm -hmm. what led to that a little bit to go into the transfer portal? It was tough. It was a very hard decision to make because Mm -hmm. I felt like I had gotten so close to all of you guys. Mm -hmm. And like to this day, I feel like that team were like so close and we're bonded Mm -hmm. for life. But um, it was a very tough decision to make. I think I just like, at the end of the day, I just wanted to be happy. And I think like my biggest thing is that it was, I think my freshman year was so tough, but Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure I was in a good place for the rest of my four years. And I wanted to be supported at the end of the day. So I think that that ultimately when, you know, was the biggest thing for me leaving. Yeah. 
The transfer portal, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it mm-hmm. because there's a lot of different stories of, you know, some people leaving for playing time, some people just wanting oh my to hop gosh. around schools Don't for different things. Don't get me things. started. But, yeah, I know, yeah. I know. Yeah, but you I know. <laughs> A a big misconception (laughs) is people don't take into account that you're people as well. And so there's a lot of different decisions. And I think also specific to Stanford, leaving is really hard, not only because of, you know, basketball and whatnot, but you're giving up the degree, you're giving up the people that you've been with, you're giving up, you're giving up a lot. And so I think just to your own experience and talking to you about it as you went through it, just, Mm. it's a big decision to make. And it's a lot, it's a lot more into it. It's talking about, you know, being happy, just a lot of different Mm. things. So um, I was really proud of you for prioritizing you you and what you needed. And I know we talk about that a lot. So just another thing to say how amazing and strong you you are to be able to do that. I appreciate that. Thank you. But now we're at UCLA and I heard a story and please correct me if this is misinformation, but Corey jumped into the pool after she heard you committed to UCLA. She did. She did. (laughs) So we're like all at her house and I'm like with my parents Mm -hmm. and everything and I'm like sitting with the girls and they're like, hey, like, you know, Coach Corey said that she jumped in the pool if you committed. And I was like, haha, like funny. Like, okay, like I might actually commit. Like, all right. Okay. (laughs) So (laughs) my parents have to leave because they have to get to Sienna's tournament the next day. And so we're Mm -hmm. walking out and I'm like, no, like I'm committing. Like I already, like I want to do this. Like I, I, I just, it felt right. So we're mm-hmm. standing outside and Coach Tony's about to leave too. And I was like, Coach Tony, like, could you step back in the house, please? And it was so awkward. <laughs> he's standing there and he's like, okay, like, all right. Yeah. So he walks back into the house and then I'm like, I'm like literally like tearing up. I'm like, oh God, I'm so nervous. Like, this is like the biggest decision ever. Like, all right, let's do it. So my parents start videotaping and I, you know, I walk into the house and I like quietly say, I'm like, I'm committing. And Coach Corey's just like, no way. Like, are you serious? And all the girls like start coming up to me and like hugging me and we're all jumping up and down. And it was like the yeah. cutest thing ever. And then immediately they're like, Corey, jump in the pool. Like you have to get in the pool. And it's so funny. And she like, we, I still have the video. She's like, I'm only doing this for Lauren Betts. And she jumps in <laughs> her full pink Two piece, her little, her go to with the visor. So yes, funny. the go to look, a classic. <laughs> the go to with the messy bun, like yeah. Mm-hmm. So she jumps in. Mm-hmm. It was the funniest thing ever, but it was such such a good memory. It was so cute. Uh, yeah. I love that so much because yeah. Corey, Corey's amazing, and I think she is. It's I think it's it's cool because for me, somebody who didn't go to UCLA, she's yeah. always been great to me. Like, oh, yes. if you ever need anything, hit yes. me up. Just like who she is as a person. Yes. She's amazing. And so I, I'm not surprised at all that she jumped in the pool. But I, know, I bet she was I know. up in there. I bet she was looking forward to doing it, honestly. She Acting probably wanted she to. Want to. Exactly. She's like, guys, stop, stop. And then like belly flopping or something crazy. <laughs> My God. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that sums her up. <laughs> yes. She's yes. so cute. Yeah. But so after you commit to UCLA, you have a pretty amazing summer where you end mm. up trying out making the America team where you got to play with charisma. Yeah. So yeah. what was that like getting to play against kind of the senior competition yeah. rather than the different youth USA teams you'd been on before? It was the biggest jump ever. And like I had yeah. been warned before I joined because even you were talking about it and you were like, yeah, like those are grown women. And I was like, yeah. no, like they're not that grown. <laughs> I'm playing against a 40 something year old woman, all Kids star in the stands. Do- w- <laughs> children. <laughs> She's got a family to take care of. She, she, like, w, yes. WNBA all-star. I was like, mm-hmm. there is no way. And the first, first little nudge she gave me, I was like, oh God, like tap me yeah, out. I'm in, I was like, I'm in I'm for done. it here. I was like, this is, so that was my first like, oh shoot, like this is really happening. But yeah, it was mm-hmm. a really great experience. Like Charisma and I got super close throughout that entire experience. Like we were roommates the entire time. Like we didn't have to switch oh, up or okay. anything. So we got to like spend that entire time together and it was just really nice getting to know her and like getting to know her on the court as well. Like she's a really great, you know, really great player, super like vocal she's a great leader like really easy Mm -hmm. to play with so I was just really grateful for that whole experience and I think it really like I was more you know I didn't want to do it to be honest like Mm -hmm. I remember my parents like literally forced me to go to that trial because I was like I just need a break I was like I you know I just need a break but I'm really grateful that I went though because I think it prepared me for going into this preseason for UCLA Mm -hmm. and um I it ultimately like gave me 
back my like confidence, I think, going into UCLA. Yeah. So I'm just, yeah, I'm glad that my parents forced me to do it, even though at the time, like I hated them. I was like, why are you making me do this? <laughs> like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I think USA definitely, I think it's amazing that it added to your confidence because yeah. going to a new school is a lot. And so talking about that preseason, did you have a lot of nerves going into your first practice at UCLA? New team, gym, oh new gosh. everything. So what was what was that kind of anxiety like leading up yes. to that? Well, I felt like I was doing my freshman year all over again. I was like, yeah. I have to meet all yeah. these new people, like new coaches, new teammates, like new other athletes. I was like, oh my gosh, like I have to do this all over again. But everyone was so sweet. And honestly, like I was nervous for maybe like the first like five minutes. And then mm -hmm. I was like making jokes with like Keith and like gabs and all the girls and I was like I'm fine like this is where I'm supposed yeah. to be like everyone's just so sweet and when I tell you we have the most amazing staff ever mm -hmm. like the most mm -hmm. support like you like everyone's just so great so it just truly feels like you're walking into a family like I just felt so comfortable yeah. with everybody from the very beginning so yeah it was like the easiest transition I've ever made oh that makes my heart warm okay Aww. so <laughs> that's amazing um so heading into this year I mean, you drop 20 points in your first game, Lauren. Like, first of all, who does that? So what do you feel like <sighs> oh. is the biggest difference for you, you know, maybe in terms of your game, in terms of your yeah. confidence that has led you into this season compared to last season? I feel like I get like a lot of my confidence from my coaches. Like they truly, yeah. there's sometimes, they, they believe in me so much much like mm -hmm. with everything I mean I'm out here like guarding on the perimeter which I was not doing last year and I'm like yeah. you know you know I'm switching on to guards and I'm you know defending you know all these people and I'm like this is like I just feel like it's changed my game so much and you know just mm -hmm. my confidence and I feel like I'm able to do like whatever I want out there like I can you know and I just have so much support from my teammates and everything and I feel like you know I'm just able to expand so much like now you know I can, you know, shoot from the high post, but I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, I can, I can dribble the ball a little bit more than I was before. And I'm switching on to guard, like all this stuff I don't think I was doing last year, but I think my coaches have been pushing me so much in practice and like, just, you know, making sure that I know, I believe that I can do it myself. And I think that it's just expanded my game so much, just all the belief they have in me. And I mean, knowing you high school to last year to now, I feel like I can yeah. even, you can see it. You're out there. Yeah. You're just doing your thing. You're playing free. There's like it's really, it's really fun to watch. So Thank we can you. all see it. Thanks. So. Heading into the season, kind of from a team perspective, you guys know, you, you know, you have a lot of talent and you have a lot yeah. of different weapons and anybody can fire off on any night, like you talked about. Yeah. So what's kind of you know, the mindset been like in the locker room, having those conversations about expectations you guys have for yourself, how are you going to hold each other accountable? What has that kind of been like heading into the season? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing for us is just making sure that anybody's ready, like on any night. I mean, we, I mean, our bench is also so deep. Like you have, you know, yeah. Christine Walla, you have Gabs, who's coming off yeah. and, you know, averaging almost a double double. Like it's crazy. So just mm -hmm. making sure that everyone's like confident and that everyone's ready to go because you never know who's going to go off that day. But I also think in practice, like we push each other so much and we're so competitive, you know, and, and so every single practice, like we're on each other, but we you know we, at the end of the day, we love each other so it doesn't matter yeah. but like you know we hold each other to the highest standard and I think it just makes us so much better and we all believe in each other so much so you go into every game knowing that like whatever you do you're going to be supported and like you know your teammates have so much belief in you like I think it just changes everybody's game so much but yeah I definitely think that like our practices just prepare us for the game so much that you know mm -hmm. we're just willing you know we just go out there and we dominate because that's just what we're doing in practice like it's you know, like coach Corey likes to say it's the habits that we pick up every single day in practice <laughs> she's gonna love me for saying that but <laughs> I think it's the habits that we work on every day that make us the team that we are and I mean you mentioned a little bit talking about London Kiki Gabby, yeah. but then you also throw in Christine into that kind of mm. class that you guys have, which is a really strong sophomore class. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like that's a young core that you guys are just going to continue to grow. Yeah. So what is that like? Obviously you have the pieces with charisma and, you know, yeah. the leadership from yeah. Cameron and all those different pieces, but what is 
What excites you about that core that you guys have that you're going to get to play together for another two, three years, really? Yeah. Listen, what excites me is that we're just going to get better and better. Like for Mm -hmm. how good we are, we have so much room to improve. And that's like the most exciting part is that we're just going to get closer and we're going to build that chemistry over time. And I'm just so excited to see everybody excel because we're so talented. But like, you know, if I see what these girls do in practice every day and what they're working on and people don't know, like we are coming. Like I I love my class so much like we're just so like we're just so fun off the court as well and I'm like so close to all of them so it just I love talking about them but they're so great like and they we we're all like very hard workers like our coaches love to brag about like how hard we work but we truly do like work our butts off and Mm -hmm. you know just the I just can't wait to see everyone progress because we're so capable of doing it so yeah and I mean that's already tight knit and then not even to mention your sister coming in and I know how close the two of you are so tell me a little bit about Sienna committing to UCLA and how just like hyped up you are to play with her for that's gonna be your senior season and so how is that gonna be first off I can't believe it still like even you saying I'm like oh my gosh like I can't believe she's coming here yeah. it was so crazy but I I'm so excited like I mean obviously you played against or with each other um senior year of high school won a state championship and that was like one of the greatest memories I have with her is when we yeah. got together and it was a very long season and we obviously went through our ups and downs but like I think it made us so much closer just going through all of that together and I'm just really excited that we're going to experience college together. I mean, there's so much that yeah. goes into college. I mean, like we're Love. growing up, like you're away from your parents. And I'm just like really excited that I'll be able to like help her her freshman year because mm-hmm. it's tough. Like freshman year is, you know, obviously very hard. So I'm just excited to like, I get to like kind of guide her through all of that, especially being a senior. Like I'll be already like, you know, comfortable by then, hopefully. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, I'll yeah, just yeah. be able to walk her through all of that and it'll just be really great. And like, there's so much that goes into college other than basketball. I'm like, we're going to be mm-hmm. able to go out together. Like, <laughs> it's going to be so fun. I'm like, hey, you know, you know how I am. I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> it's going oh, to be I so fun. Oh, my God. I can't imagine senior Betty playing me last year. Jesus Christ. Oh, um, my well, I love that for the two oh of you. And I know your mom is just going to be through the roof when she gets to come oh and see God. the two of you play Tears. together. Tears. Tears. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be emotional. She, the, waterworks, the waterworks are already Oh, going my gosh. <laughs> okay. Now, moving into the NIL space, when did NIL get real for you? Because it came in at the end of your mm-hmm. high school, didn't it? It did. I think, yeah. like, my senior year, I was, like, first introduced. I had that commercial, which is really cool. So I did mm-hmm. that, like, that little ad. That was really cool. Like, that was my first yeah. kind of experience in front of, like, cameras and, like, you know, script. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is kind mm-hmm. of crazy. Like, all these cameras in my face. Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. But I think that was, like, my first kind of, like, you know, little intro to it. And then... um, I think once I got to UCLA, obviously just being in LA, it's like absolutely crazy. There's just so many opportunities and like coach Corey is really good with like just getting our names out there and like networking mm-hmm. all of that. Like she's great. Like she's the best at all of that. So I think she's been really helping me through all of that. And yeah, I think like, you know, ever since I started, obviously like playing well this sophomore year, a lot more opportunities have come obviously. So it's just, you know, yeah. I'm still like, kind of new to all of this but it's it's been a really good experience and I feel like I'm doing a really good job of balancing it like it hasn't been Mm -hmm. overwhelming but um obviously just being in LA there's just so much to do out here so it's been really cool just like experiencing all of that yeah I mean it's a lot to balance with school social life and basketball it's a lot I don't know how you did it senior year of college (laughs) because that was that was a lot oh my gosh it was a lot it was a lot but what do you feel like has been the best advice that you've gotten moving through the NIL space? Cause it's a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Just staying where my feet are. Like, I just mm-hmm. think that's just staying present and like, you know, not comparing because obviously mm-hmm. like that's one thing, like if you compare your, you know, experience with NIL to other people, I think that's just like setting you up for failure. So just being like appreciative for what I've received and like my whole experience and journey through all of this has just made me like a lot more just content with where I am. Like I just don't have to compare my experiences to anybody else's. And I, so I think that would be the best. Yeah. yeah that's advice good. That Cause it. especially with social media, it, it can get easy to do yes, that. Like you can easily yeah. compare. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then what's been your biggest non-negotiable when you move into working with brands? Like, oh, I'm not, I'm not into that. Oh, I don't want to work with this brand. How do you kind of navigate Mm. who you want to work with? (laughs) This is kind of funny, but one 
I would say <laughs> with like photo shoots, right? Uh-huh. You know my mother. <laughs> if, it, if the photo shoot is... <laughs> If it's if it's a little too you know a little too grown for me, yeah, it's yeah. not happening. It's not, not happening. Oh my gosh, no! Because I don't want to. Um, no, we, no. Michelle Betts is not having it. Absolutely she not. not. Playing. No. She not so playing. that that's mine. That's mine. Okay, that's good. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna do a quick little, let's, a quick little game, I suppose, of one's gotta okay. go. And this is this is a my knowledge of you and things that you love. Okay. So it's gonna be hard. Okay, so okay, okay. your lo- your love of Disney, ma'am, Disney oh. movies. One has got to go. Okay, here oh we go. We gosh. got okay. <laughs> we got Lion King, Princess and the Frog, and Moana. One's got to go. Okay, <laughs> I was like, I love you, Talana, but Moana's got to go. <laughs> I'm weak, please. <laughs> Moana's gotta go. Okay. Moana's gotta go. She's gotta go. Okay. Yeah, Moana's gotta go. Okay, that is respectful. <laughs> and now we're gonna go Disney princesses. We got okay. Tiana, Ariel, and Jasmine. Oh my gosh. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. That's so These tough. are the hard hitters of the whole interview so far. These are the hard like, questions. These are so hard. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll have to say... Jasmine, Jasmine Ooh, has to go. That was that was gonna be mine. I agree. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially and with the new we'll, Ariel, like. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Face, you know, you know. Yeah, got to. Can't. Okay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and then moving into our game day routine, real quick, we mm-hmm. got pregame meal, shoot around, and warm up music. I feel like this is an obvious answer. Which one's got to go? Shoot around, probably. Yeah, duh. Bye. <laughs> yeah, shoot around, shoot around can bye. go. Like, I mean, it's all right, but like, we can't We've skip the music. The scout. Yeah, we can't We've skip the music. The like, what was practice for? Like, what? Exactly. Like, we'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, these these are the hard hitters for you specifically. Okay. Music. Ready? Mm. SZA. Mm. Brent Fias. And Don't Victoria Monet. Oh. Oh, okay. That's easy. I thought you were going to say You're summer. You're going to drop. Then, I thought well, about summer. Yeah. I thought about if summer. If you would have said summer, it would have been, I can't choose, but I'm going to have to say Victoria. Because <sighs> I don't really go. listen to her. I don't listen to her music, but I, <sighs> I love her new, I love her, you know, proud of her, all the Grammy nominations. Like, she's, yeah, she deserves she's it. killing it. She's killing yes. it. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're headed into our last section. It's going to be rapid fire. Rapid fire okay. as best as you can. Okay. Like I believe in you. You're going to do great. I've seen okay. this and Fran, Fran took forever with hers. Fran sucks. Yeah. So do better she, than Fran. Yeah. She's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fran, if you're listening, you were horrible. <laughs> yeah. You're terrible. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. All right. What's the drill you never want to see on the practice plan? Oh my gosh. Full court closeouts. Oh, oh my that, gosh. Absolutely not. God, the no. sprint to the slides, to the sprint, mm-hmm. to the slides, to the back pedal. None of that. I hate it. No. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Game winning shot or game winning block? Game winning block. I was going to say, you block. love a block. Yeah, I love you a good love block. A block. Love a good block. Okay. Lauren, and one or three pointer? <laughs> three pointer. Three pointer. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. That's Let's go. Thinking. Let's go. A shooter. A shooter. <laughs> a pure shooter. Yep. Yes. Yes. Um, what's off the court your go-to sneaker or shoe? Because I know you Ooh. like a heel or a boot. I do love a good boot. I okay. So it depends. Because if I'm okay. like with my little like street wear, love a good mm-hmm. Jordan ones. Like yeah. or if I'm feeling girly, I'll wear like my little yeah. leather boots. Moment. Like Ooh, you know, it depends cute. on the vibe. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I love that. Um, mm-hmm. A group TikTok or a solo TikTok? Solo. <laughs> oh, okay. Where's the toughest place to play on the road? Oh, okay. Well, Arizona was tough. Even though we won, Ooh, it was that loud. was like, it was loud. And those fans, yeah. man, there's something else. That was, that was they tough. Were, mm-hmm, yeah, that mm-hmm. was tough. Arizona's yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who's the biggest trash talker? Girl. Um... <laughs> um <laughs> Um, I would, <laughs> I would have to say, honestly, I'm just going to say on my team, Angela Dugalich. She's really? a trash talker. Yes. Oh, yes. wow. Listen, I listen, you do not, that. you do not want to get on her bad side. Like, you do not so want to nice. get on her bad From side. From all my interactions, she's so nice. But did she flip yeah. a switch? Oh my gosh. That switch is scary. You do not want to wow. mess with her. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Angela. Yeah. Okay. Angela. Um, hardest player to guard. I mean, probably Peely, if anything. I yeah. haven't really, I mean, obviously I didn't really get to play against her, but from watching, yeah. 
I can already, I can imagine. She's tough. Yeah, she's tough. Okay. <laughs> this one's making me chuckle. <laughs> Biggest <laughs> flopper. <Okay>. Girl. <laughs> you can stay on your team. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> this is funny. Um, biggest flopper, probably. I mean, we don't really have any floppers because I think that's personally like, come on now, like stop it. I'll add charisma. Charisma be flopping. <laughs> I'm not does she? This. Does she actually? <laughs> yes. Does she? Listen, I don't know. Yes. Like, I don't. I don't know. I don't. You watch. can tell her. Actually, actually, yeah, maybe a yeah, little. Yeah, you bit. could tell her maybe tomorrow. Haley said you flop. <laughs> Haley said you flop. Got it. I'll tell her. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Biggest basketball ick. Okay, this is like really random, but posts uh-huh. that like pull your pants down or like pull the jerseys, all of that. I've, uh, I've had it all. I've not had your it all. pants. Someone tried to pull my shorts down in the middle uh, of the game. Like, what are you doing? What yeah, are you doing? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So annoying. Okay. Um, I already know your answer. Your celebrity look alike. I'm not doing this. Did you see my Come team on. TikTok? Did I did you see not. My team I did not. That but went tell viral. Us. I didn't Haley, know. Haley, go ahead. Haley, go ahead. You can, you can answer this one. Oh, Zendaya. Thank you, Queen. Thank you, Queen. <laughs> yeah, no, check out, <laughs> check out, check out the TikTok. Check out the TikTok okay. that I'm talking about in the UCLA. So, yeah, and then you tell me. Once I watch yeah. it, I'm going to text you. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. Now, this is a hard hitter. Sephora or Ulta? Uh, Sephora. Okay. Sephora. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. so too. I have yeah. more points at yeah. Sephora. Yeah, okay. same. <laughs> Um, someone, so who would you want to be your two on two teammate? And you can't mm. pick one of your teammates. Mm. Haley Jones. Period. Oh, shut up. I was going to no. say Brianna Stewart, Asia Wilson, Haley, Gray. stop doing that. <laughs> Haley, l- listen, you are that girl. Me and Haley. Okay. Me and Haley. <laughs> okay. Give us your best impersonation of Coach Corey. Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> I was gonna say I know she's, she's gonna, gonna watch this. She's gonna kill me, but like she knows, like when she walks around practice. When she, miss 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 Corey close. She's got a little dump truck. Okay, so when she walks around, when she walks around practice, we all talk about it. She knows because someone dressed up as her as Halloween. She already knows. If Lord. you know, you know. It's the it's the Miss Corey Close walk. It's the Miss Corey Close walk around practice. She knows. I don't know what I expected you to say, but it was not the dump truck. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, Lauren. We'll wrap it up on that note. Okay. <laughs> but thank you, everyone, for listening to our first episode of the College Hoop season. We'll be back next week with another episode of Sometimes I Hoop. Lauren, thank you so much for being such a delight for this first episode of the new season. Thank you so much for having me, Hey, Appreciate you. <laughs> Corey has a dump truck. That was too good. <laughs> I can't. I can't breathe. She's, everyone's uh, gonna die when they hear that. <laughs> <laughs>